As a young boy, Jose Perinella marveled at the incredible architecture in his hometown in Catalonia, southern Spain. And in 1913, he sailed halfway across the world to make the impossible dream real for his then fiance, Matilda. And this is the story of the impossible dream. Be sure to stick around to hear the incredible story of Jose's castle and how it now is experienced for us all to enjoy. Landing on the shores of Australia, Jose knew that he had to work hard to create his dream castle. He worked hard for 11 years creating his own wealth, buying and proving and selling cane farms. While travelling throughout the picturesque countryside of North Queensland, he discovered a beautiful lush forest along the Mena Creek Falls, an ideal place for his dream castle. After seeing this beautiful lush scrub in 1914, he eventually purchased the property in 1929 for £120 and he started to build his pleasure gardens. But before he could start on his impossible dream, he returned home to visit Matilda, the lady he was engaged to. But I guess after 8 or 10 or 11 years of not hearing from her fiancé, she had moved on, surprisingly. But as you know, everything always works out in those romance novels, and it happened here as well. He ended up marrying Matilda's sister, Margarita, and they married and returned to Australia in 1929. And this is where he started his impossible dream, with 47 step staircase to shift all the building materials that he dug out of the love tunnel. Then he started the cottage that he hand built from stone and is now okay. the museum. Like all this work he did is amazing. And he actually tunneled it all out through the river and there's a log tunnel down there. I think I showed you some footage that he used. I think this might have been restored though by the looks of it. That was his old residence. He actually used to live in there and then had this as like a gallery museum. And down here, he used to be able to sell um, cold ice cream because he was actually um, a pastry chef and back in the 1930s most people didn't have power but he ran his own hydropower from the rain, uh, from the rain and the waterfall powered his own fridges so that was pretty amazing for back then. They lugged all of the material by hand up out of the tunnels the building materials from the area and they constructed of reinforced concrete from old railway tracks covered in plaster and clay to make cement all doing this by hand could you just imagine how much work they did and let's not forget that this is in far north queensland so it is incredibly hot and muggy Inspired by his boyhood memories, Paranello and his workers set out designing the entertainment area. They created a huge movie theatre and it transformed on weekends to a ballroom. Must have been all the old china they used back in the 1930s. This is the old ballroom. That's a little stage up there. And he used to play projector movies as well. And this was all a timber floor, had big red drapes, and there is a replica um, disco ball, but um, obviously that's not what it was, but apparently he paid a fortune for it. Uh, the original one that was made overseas somewhere. So we finished our tour and we're just having a bit of a look around. And so this is one of the areas where you had to be dressed in a three-piece suit. And so they made change rooms down here so people could get changed. Yeah. This 
where they had all their little picnics and so you could dress casually here but if you wanted to go up there you had to be dressed in a three-piece suit that's why they had those little change rooms all little tables and he also designed it so every single table had a view of the waterfall do you reckon they were having tea, red wine or vodka? Oh wow, look at it on the side there. So gorgeous. And there was a huge flood that came through here in I think 1993 and it kind of wiped out a lot of the stuff because it was actually even above that waterline. I'm just grabbing some fish food to feed the eel. Whilst the forest was very lush already, Jose was hell-bent on making sure that he created an incredible garden. And he planted more than 700 trees around Paranella's home, an incredible castle, including the avenue of Curis that was now a tower and it's like a cathedral walkway of beautiful big trees. Tragedy shook Paranella Park in 1946 when a mass of logs from a clearing upstream swept away the railway bridge and descended on the park, destroying the refreshment rooms. This caused the park to close for six months and the Paranellas replanted and repaired what they could and reopened. Yep. Are you going to throw some in? Ready? Awesome. Wow, they yeah, swim fast, fast, don't they? No, when they're all over there, I'm going to give it one. But sadly, tragedy had hit the Paranellas, and in 1948, Jose passed away, leaving Margarita, daughter Teresa, and son Joe. The Paranellas did best they could, given the fact that Margarita was left with her two children to look after as well as running the park. And tragically in 1967, Margarita also passed away, leaving the children the custodians of Jose's dreams. After a few decades of trying to live up to Jose's impossible dream, finally the family sold the property in 1977. In 1993, Mark and Judy Evans were travelling Australia, just like us, and they stumbled across Paranella Park, and they envisioned Jose Paranella's impossible dream, and they wanted to resurrect it, and that's exactly what they did. So we just finished our tour, but um, apparently Teresa's Falls, what we went to today, is lit up the same way as it was back in the day from the hydro electric, I suppose. So we're going to check it out. So we may be the only ones in the park right now. We're just coming up to, what's this, the love tunnel? And this is right where he used to dig all the, um, all the clay through. Oh, now we can see it. Oh, there's a bat just came in there. Just here. So these things will all be waking up here. Oh my gosh, look at them. Oh my gosh, so it's so so like a stuff. rat. There was like a rat. Like, yeah, just don't eat them. Wow. Find it there. It's a little micro, but... Those fan arms are amazing. It's like a whole canopy. Teresa's 
So what was the story behind this? Something from water. Why is it living up? That's it. Why is it living up like this? So apparently it's written it up the way, oh no. What? The way it originally was in the old days. Because of the hydropower, they've still got it set like this. That is it cool. We know what we have, let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. Call us crazy, but things are finally